back to the hangout. There you are. Yay. I see a little icon of him. So, There's oh, there a Richard. Is. Okay, so Richard is, his audio is now looping so that we can see the audio from, not see the audio, so that we can hear the audio from <laughs> That's Courtney. That's not until later when you're really tired that you're seeing the audio. <laughs> see audio. <laughs> So, so Richard's going to share our video from Courtney on how to get started making your own. Does that um, mean I'm out of here, you guys? Yeah. Oh, can I say goodbye really quick? Yes. Yeah. Please. I feel like we didn't get to give enough stuff away, and that makes me a little bit sad. We can invite so, you back later. Um. Well, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to come back, but I, just really quick. So, like, the next five people that want to tweet at Surly Amy just hello or something nice you have to say something nice and not be a troll but if you tweet at me something about cosmo quest the next five people i will send you a free necklace so Thank whoever you know. gets there first at surly amy and then i just wanted to end with a little quote okay when professor brian cox was speaking about the news about finding the higgs boson he said this is pure curiosity driven exploration happening before our eyes and that joyful exploration of the natural world and how we see it is a perfect example of how artists and scientists share similar passions. So everybody go out there, work together, learn about science, make art. And thank you guys so much for having me on your show. You're both wonderful people and all the people that work for you are really great. And you guys go donate to these people. Please donate. Let's keep this thank project you, Amy. going. Thank all you. right. Thanks so much for having me. We'll see I will, you soon. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Oh, and someone's asking if uh, her moon necklaces were the ones that were given away for International Observe the Moon Night, and that is true. Yes. 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 We have. Uh, she's been making moon surlies specifically for all our moon mapper type yeah. stuff, which is cool. Um, hang on. We should give away one of those during the moon session. Yes, we can do that. I okay. Know I've seen them in your office, mm -hmm. so I know they exist. Um, okay. So Richard, if let me go ahead and type to him. Press. Also, uh, Stuart and Irene, if you're watching, um, you're probably getting an invitation from Timothy Lickauer to join the green room because you guys are the next segment. Um, so if you can do that, uh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Cool. So I'm going to tell Richard to start playing the video. Hello, and welcome to our first edition of Crafty Science. So later today, we'll be making some Galaxy t-shirts. You may have seen some of these items before. Oh. I guess I shouldn't say we're making t-shirts, because we're making a few things. Richard, we see you again. Uh, but there's Galaxy it. leggings, Galaxy scarves, all kinds of different Galaxy things that are all the craze right now. Uh, and galaxies are something we're very interested in here at Cosmo Quest. So we decided we'd go ahead and try to make these with you guys as well. So um, these are all. Um, so Richard, it mute. hang on. Don't. Richard, don't type. It mutes when you type. Let's give this a shot with the, all these old t shirts. So we have. One t-shirt laid flat on this random large piece of cardboard. It can be paper, it can be cardboard, or you can just lay flat out on a driveway that you don't care about painting a little bit. Um, I also got a couple other fabrics to try so we could test them out and see which ones work best. That way you guys aren't ruining all your random nice black things, finding out later that the fabric is wrong or something. So I have one denim jacket, one cotton t-shirt, and one random mix of polyester, rayon, lycra, I believe, synthetic fabric. Um, the only fabric I know for sure not to use at this point is nylon. Um, the fabric paints, for some reason, don't stick to the nylon. Um, so try to avoid that. Anyway, so now we also have fabric paint, which if you go to the craft store, it is not in the aisle with all of the paint section. It is in an aisle right next to t-shirts and tie-dyeing and that variety of things 
In our, Mac, in our Michaels, it was in the back left corner of the store. Doubtful that's the same for you. Anyway, we decided not to use screen printing ink, and we also decided not to use regular acrylic paint. Regular acrylic paint does not flex very well on fabric. The screen printing ink, I think, might be a little too runny. So we went with the fabric paints, which we are going to water down a little bit, but um, not to the point where they would be an ink-like consistency. So you need, for sure, purple, blue, red, and white. Yellow is optional, but they had a really cool glow-in-the-dark yellow, so I figured, why not see how the glow-in-the-dark works? Also, they had a metallic blue on sale, so I was going to try that as well. And these little guys in front are just random other colors we thought we'd try to add a little jazz and see what looked good, and that way you guys can decide later what what you like best and how you want your shirt to look. Uh, so we have a shimmery purple, a night sky glitter, um, an iridescent yellow, and then I got a regular colored yellow just in case the glow in the dark looks funny. And then I also got a sparkle glittery white if you want to add some pizzazz later. These are two spray bottles. Um, I have two here. I, I really only need one, but um, I have two different spray heads. One is the standard stream, off, spray, and then off again. And then this one is the variety that you have to tighten and loosen to get a variety of different stream strengths. So I am going to use both of these and again you guys can determine what you think looks best to use on your own clothing. Um, I also have a little ziplock bag with the corner cut out. A funnel would work for this wonderfully, I just couldn't find one. Uh, so that's just to pour the bleach water mixture into these spray bottles. This is bleach. We need a half and half mixture in our spray bottle or bottles if you have two. Um, and this is just plain old H2O. Um, also, we have two old toothbrushes. This is for flicking white paint to make star splatters. Just like you see on your mirror in the morning when you brush your teeth. They want you to actually flick like this all the cardboard unless we want to ruin everything within reach. Um, also we need a sharpened old school pencil. Old school meaning not mechanical clearly but <laughs> Um, this is to make the X patterns for our stars with the white paint once we splatter it. Um, and then also, I have a Sharpie. This is a personal preference thing. When I mix random mixtures up in spray bottles or any kind of bottles, really, I now take a piece of duct tape and label them. This came from... Once my brother refilled this little mini wine bottle I had that we took out on the boat, and he refilled it with gin, and I did not know it was gin, and I went and took a drink thinking I was getting a nice glass of Pinot Gris, and it was gin, and that was very upsetting. <laughs> I like gin, but not all the time. Um, anyway, so ever since then, I now make a point to always label, especially things like bleach, that you wouldn't want to be mistaken for something else. Um, and then finally, we have some of these random little makeup wedge sponges. Um, I just bought a big pack. I think regular sponges would work just fine, but I figured the white 
um, would do well in the different colors of paint. And I wasn't sure if the yellow or green sponges would bleed out into our colors. So I decided to stay on the safe side and buy a pack of cheapo cosmetic makeup sponges. These were enriched with vitamin E, though that's certainly not a requirement. Uh, anyway, these are all the things you need. Go find some random old article of clothing. Um, I have fashioned some mannequins out of old cardboard boxes. Um, and I'm going to try that with the dress and the jacket. The jacket mainly because I think I only want to do that back square panel for the jacket. And the dress because I don't want to have any weird crease lines. Um, all the tutorials I found online for this all just had the shirt laid out flat. So I'm doing that for the black cotton shirt. And I'm hoping, I think anyway, that the bleach spray will just bleed through. And that's how I get my galaxies on the back side of the shirt. Though I'm not sure. This is kind of trial and error right now. So um, go get your supplies and come meet us back later for Crafty Science. And we'll be doing the steps of this along the way today. Awesome. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Richard's back. Richard is back, so he just okay. blinged at me. Um, so do we want to go to that? Yeah, might as well go to the video while we set up on this end. Okay, so we have shirt stuff coming up. He's ready to run the video clip. I probably need to resend the invitite. Oh, there's the button for it. We we have carnage. Okay, so I've sent Richard the um, invite, Whew. so you can come in and bring the video clip for us to see. It keeps making my phone go vibrant. It's probably the same thing. Hobos is a bit of a worry, uh, according to Richard. Uh, if we have Hello. a oh there you are. If we have a Mars base, uh, it'd be necessary to keep Phobos from crashing into the surface. Is that what you're? Yep. That's that's what you're adding on. Mm. Um, so I'm going to check one more time our science facts hashtag. Good morning. Um, yeah, so you know what? We are going to go with, oh, uh, where did you go? With, uh, oh, and we have one chiming in science fact about moon from Patrick Durrell, who was on earlier. One of my favorite science facts about moons in the solar system, Saturn's mm -hmm. moon Mimas, is a single large crater makes it look like the Death Star. The Death Star. The impact that created the crater was likely almost large enough to destroy the moon. Uh, I actually got to see Mimas through a telescope when I was in Indianapolis, and so I actually squeed, Oh my god, I'm looking at the Death Star! Uh, I was very excited about that. Oh, uh, and then uh, we have a science fact relating to the relativity stuff I talked about just before uh, from Alan Versfeld, which I am not going to be able to run all the way through, but Michelson and Morley discovered the fact that speed of light is a constant before Einstein came up with special relativity. That's what That's uh, right. spur on his thinking about it was, it was actually yeah, shown in an they, experiment. Yeah, they kind of forced him to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm going to give the award to Will Selwood. So, Will, you have won the Surly Ramek Surly. Uh, I need you, because my brain is broken, to email me. Uh, email CosmoQuestX at gmail.com. Um, and uh, let us know that you are the one who won the contest. Uh, I'm going to write your name down, but I'm going to need you to send us uh, some other information as well so we can actually get, get my... that to you. So I'm writing down uh, a note, but I'm not going to remember it tomorrow when I wake up. So Will Selwood, <laughs> email CosmoQuestX at gmail. So what's up, Richard? There. Oh, uh, I just got, got a little uh, bit, little bit of sleep. Thought I'd uh, pop in and say hi. Hi. Well, you have I've, sunlight I've, as well now. Yes, uh, the window back there is now fairly lit up. Yeah. Cool, cool. So do you have a video for us? Uh, yeah, well, I've got the, uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'll go to screen share, select it. I won't actually play it because you won't hear the audio. Oop. 
Ah, I didn't click on the right thing. Come on. There, and then start screen share. There, you can see the uh, the, the video oh. uh, non-moving. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we won't, won't be able to hear it just yet, but here we have uh, sort of sped up. Oh. You can see what, what we're going to be seeing. Yeah, you can see how she uh, uh, sprays it, and wow, it's magical. Look at that. <laughs> really, really cool. Uh, so that, that'll be uh, however many minutes long you want to be. The whole thing's like 36 minutes long. Are we we've playing seen, the whole video? Yes, we're we've playing seen, the whole video for this. The thing. whole rest of the video. Oh, yep. okay. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so if you're ready for me to play it, I'll, I'll go on and run up my other software, and uh, uh, then I can sure. loop through the audio. Sure. Go ahead and get that set up and uh, start playing that when you're ready. I'll, uh, I can ra ramble on until then, and when I hear it start, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> As I know, when you have sound floor running, you can't then speak to it. Yeah, so. yeah. Yep. Okay, let's see. Um, so we'll get that started, and we'll get the rest of Courtney's video showing you how to oh. make a spacey shirt, like the, yeah. this one we have yeah. here. Now, uh, she mentioned that it um, took her about four days to get the whole thing um, filmed out, out of doors, and so uh, with all of the uh, weather we were having, and so she goes, yeah, I was wearing four, I'm wearing four different shirts in the video, yeah. so <laughs> she didn't have that many costume changes planned, it was yeah. just done over several days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have destroyed the attic with all of the things. Um, got, that's muted. And so we've got... And uh, oh, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Uh, so yeah, share the link cosmoquest.org slash donate. Just cosmoquest.org. Um, help us out. Help feed Joe. Help uh, keep our programs running and let us build new ones. Ooh. Radio astronomy. <laughs> so we're up to twelve thousand four hundred and ninety. So we are slowly creeping up on that fifteen thousand. Uh, to get a grad student for a year. Woo I got a bling. Someone's bringing all the people are blinging at me. Richard. Oh, okay, so Richard says he's ready. So I'm going to share that. Press play. And we're not getting sound. <sighs> we got you. I hear you, Richard. Oh, you still hear me? Yeah. Oh. Why is that? It's not supposed to be. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Input says sound flower. Output yeah. says CD spin back to. <sighs> Did you change your uh, sound settings on your computer to sound yeah. flower as well? Uh -huh. um, if I do sound flower, I'm both. What happens if I do both? Uh -huh. Yeah, check your system preferences. I think you have to yeah, put yeah. it there. Yeah, that's, that's where I am. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, sound input and output. You want to output to Soundflower. Yeah. Output. Well, there's also C. I'm using CD Spin uh, Doctor capture support to uh, as the the feed through. Actually, it has to go through that, which is captures a file. It says status capturing. Okay. For and a minute you and fifty six. Sure your input to the Hangout. Which input. Has to be set in the Hangout software, because the Hangout software will ignore your system preferences. So if you click the gear box up above, okay, and then set the sound preferences in there. Oh, see, I didn't do that before. Maybe that's we had some problem before, as I recall. Um, default device microphone. Aha! Built-in input sound flower. Oh, oh, okay. And he just went quiet. So I'm doing that for the black cotton shirt, and I'm hoping, I think anyway, that the bleach spray will just bleed through, and that's how I get my galaxies on the back side of the shirt. So I'm not sure this is kind of... So, um, go get your supplies. And come meet us back later for Crafty Science. And we'll be doing the steps of this along the way today. All right, we're back. And we're zoomed in on the lay flat items currently. Dog barking.
out the different spray bottles. Richard, when you type, you mute Courtney. So please don't type. We can't hear Courtney. Can you rewind so that we can hear Courtney, please? Ah, lost Richard. So sorry, I'm trying to get <laughs> Richard's attention. I'm not quite sure. There we go. I s Richard, things, things are muted. Hello, we're watching the pretty video. We're hearing no sound. Richard, if you can hear me, stop the video. We lost Richard. Okay, I'm going to try typing at him one more time. Oh, this is this is bad. Okay. We are having tech fail everyone. I'm so sorry. I'm not quite sure what to say. Wait, Richard is responding now. Okay. You ended up muting Richard when, when you started typing or something. We lost your audio. Um, if you can please rewind this two minutes. Still muted on your end. Still can't hear. Okay, so I can explain what Courtney's doing. What she's doing right now is she's getting ready to bleach this shirt, which is the shirt we've been showing all day. Um, so what she's doing is she's going to spray two different uh, styles of bleach onto it. One of the styles of bleach um, has the nozzle done so that it's a wide dispersion of bleach, so she gets a spattering of bleach all over it, which I think is what she just explained. And the other bottle of bleach that she's going to spray is a narrow stream of bleach. And so I think she's getting ready to go with the bleach. So there's the concentrated stream that she's putting on right now. Oh no, that's actually the large dispersion. And it's amazing how fast the bleach is activating on the cotton shirt. This is why you really want to use cotton. So that's um, the first thing. She's going to now put more on in different places to get different effects. So that, we hold up this shirt for comparison so you can see the section that she's working on. She's now adding stuff over in the corner. And again, this is just bleach. And the idea is you want to uh, define areas where you're going to have your nebulosity, where you're going to have your galaxies, where you're going to have your star clusters. Um, and I have Courtney actually trying to get a hold of me right now on phone. Um, so while the virtual Courtney continues to spray things, um, I'm going to be talking to her on text. Um, okay, that was taken care of. So she's also, you can see, um, spraying on the arms. So the idea is she's going to make the entire thing covered in galaxies and nebulae and star clusters. She's going to add one more with that bottle. Now normally when you do this, you would want to make sure that you had cardboard between the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt. Um, because the bleach will bleach through to the other side of the shirt. Um, in this case, she decided it was okay if the bleach went through because she was just going to bleach both sides anyways, and this might lead to some interesting patterns. So she's going in, adding a few more details. Just trying to make sure that it, it has all the effects that she wants. Um, these are the areas on the shirt that she's going to be able to layer in paint later. 
and um, you can just get much brighter and more vibrant colors by bleaching out the black first and by having the black around the rest of the shirt. Um, it just makes it easier to work with. It really gives it the impression of you're looking in to deep space. So now Courtney is uh, going after an acrylic vest thing. Um, I'm not sure what that actually would be called. Um, and what we discover is acrylic does not bleach. So like the t-shirt, the which is 98% cotton, 2% uh, uh, spandex, it bleached pretty much instantly. And the acrylic is not responding to the bleach. White, a little bit, foaming a little bit. You may need to come back and hit that again. I don't know if the bleach is going to do as much to this as it did to the cotton. So, I think... Maybe we try to do some of these small sprays as well. Do some in the distance galaxies. So Courtney is looking at this you as a perfectionist at this point. You brighter and more vibrant colors by bleaching out the black first and by having the black around the rest of the shirt. Um, it just makes it easier to work with. It really gives it the impression of you're looking in to deep space. So now Courtney is uh, going after an acrylic vest thing. Um, I'm not sure what that actually would be called. Um, and what we discover is acrylic does not bleach. So like the t-shirt, the which is 98% cotton, 2% uh, uh, spandex, it bleached pretty much instantly. And the acrylic is not responding to the bleach. White, a little bit, foaming a little bit. You may need to come back and hit that again. I don't know if the bleach is going to do as much to this as it did to the cotton. So... I think maybe we try to do some of these small sprays as well. So for those of you just turning in, just Courtney some, Hogan is showing us how to make galaxies. clothing that looks like it's covered in space. And there's lots of angry sparrows. So this is how that comes out. And this is the one that we're going to be painting. <sighs> So Courtney is looking at this as a perfectionist. Much brighter and more vibrant colors by bleaching out the black first and by having the black around the rest of the shirt. Um, it just makes it easier to work with. And I have no it's clue really why my voice keeps you're looking looping in to deep on. Space. There's something weird so going on. So now Courtney is uh, going after an acrylic vest thing. Um, I'm not sure what that actually would be called. Um, 
And what we discover is acrylic does not bleach. So like the, the t-shirt, which is 98% cotton, 2% uh, uh, spandex, it bleached pretty much instantly. And the acrylic it is not responding to the bleach. Why? A little bit, only a little bit. May need to come back and hit that again. I don't know if the bleach Richard, is your audio is looping somehow. So the audio, I have no clue what's happening with the audio. I'm, I'm muting you temporarily, Richard. So we, we're experiencing some sort of surreal audio loop drama. Um, so I'm going to go back to narrating Courtney and see if the surreal audio looping going on on Richard's end um, stops if I pause a few minutes. Um, so what Courtney's doing next is um, she's, she's going after now something that's a blend dress. Um, our goal is to eventually finish this dress and put it up for auction on uh, eBay. One of the really amazing things that's been happening this weekend is we've actually got several different things donated that we're going to be able to put up on eBay. I'll be working to figure out how to put those up on Monday. And we will be uh, auctioning off the shirt I've already shown you. And um, I think we're auctioning off this jacket as well. Um, and we're going to try and finish the dress that Courtney is currently bleaching in the video that you're looking at. I'm going to see if the audio has come back to be more normal yet. Oh, except I just remuted Richard. Richard, can you unmute yourself so that I can see if your audio is now working better? Apparently not. Okay, I'll just keep describing. So what she's doing is she's going through now, um, adding bleach all around the dress. She constructed a um, cardboard box that she's using. Now, after she was done bleaching, she went away. She let everything dry for a long time. While it was drying, you can see the whites got even whiter. Um, got some beautiful patterns on the shirt. That came out really, really well. Um, unfortunately, a uh, jacket also came out really, really well. The crazy little acrylic thing disappeared. Um, crazy little acrylic thing disappeared because it did not accept the bleach at all. Um, and I hear Richard typing at me and I'm not seeing the chat. Um, so she's now describing the dress that she bleached. Um, Richard, can you try unmuting things on your end? See if we can get this back. Um, so the next thing that she did was she mixed, there she is, she's showing that the, the acrylic simply did not bleach. Uh, so do not try and bleach acrylic. Acrylic will not bleach. So, so Richard, you should be able to unmute yourself in the upper right. Um, so then the, the next thing that she's going to do is she mixed a bunch of paints. You can see them hanging there beh behind her. So step one was find the things. Step two was bleach them. Step three is find your paints. Use regular everyday fabric paints, not the stuff that's for screening, not, the, not acrylic paint because acrylic paint is too stiff and it will crack while you're wearing your clothing and that's just not good looking. Um, what you want to do is get fabric paint. Uh, this is back corner of Michael's, usually hidden back in an aisle. You want to water down the paint a little bit so that you can actually paint with it. And there's also some spatter techniques that she's going to be doing using toothbrushes, uh, chopsticks, um, and Apparently other not. things. Okay, I'll just keep describing. So what she's doing is she's going through now, um, adding bleach all around the dress. She constructed a okay, um, Richard, the, cardboard the audio box that's coming that out is like mystery no, audio. After she was done bleaching, ago. she went away. She let everything. I I'm not at all sure what's happening with the audio from Richard's machine. Um, I think it's taking the audio from the Hangout and playing it back with a 70 second delay. Um, really well. Um, yep, that's that's my audio. With the 70 uh, jacket delay, also Richard. came out really really well. The crazy little. Okay, so we have much chaos going on with the audio. Um, so the next thing that she talked about is uh, she uh, looked up a bunch of images on the Hubble site. 
and using the Hubble site she started figuring out what she wanted to place in each place based on what did these bleach come out shaped like. Uh, so she came up with the Crab Nebula with a set of pulsars. Um, she was going to do a planetary nebula, and so she's going through now and explaining all the different things that she's going to paint um, based on going to Hubble site dot, I believe it's dot org, and figuring out what she wanted to look at. Um, So here, um, I lost the shirt. So what's kind of neat is she's going through and she's describing what she intended for all of those things to be. And if you could actually hear her, she's describing things that are different from what she ended up painting. Because as she went, she ended up deciding some of the objects ended up being something different from what she described. This one here was what she originally figured. The Crab Nebula was what she originally figured. Um, this gorgeous little ring nebula that she added. Um, that wasn't part of the original plan. It got added later. But here she is doing what every good artist does. She's planning ahead, making sure she knows how everything's going to fit together, working on defining her aesthetic. And, and I really wish you could hear all of this. We will uh, go ahead and post this video standalone on the Astrosphere Vids channel. Um, this is going to be, become part of a new series, Craft for Science. Now, the one thing that did happen is some of the bleach did leak all the way through the shirt onto the back. She added some paint to them to try and make them a little bit more interesting. We haven't actually done the back of the shirt. We probably need to do the back of the shirt before we auction the shirt. Um, if you don't want that to happen, put a pizza box inside it. Put cardboard in some other way inside it. Yeah, so that's bleach. It does that. Uh, so she went through, she worked on trying to figure out um, how uh, to lay everything out, and she's describing it in detail. Um, so, sorry, I'm being typed to, so she's, you're going to have to trust me on this, she's continuing to describe how she's going to place things. Um, <laughs> so she's talking there about um, this sleeve over here which she designed to be the core of a galaxy. It's the inside of an AGN. Um, so she was trying to figure out how do you look at the shape and figure out from the shape. And she's describing now how she's going to layer the color on. And one of the things that defined what she wanted to do was the way the bleach sprayed out uh, with that vibrantly white center and then the slight spray of diffuseness around it. She's talking about how she saved all of the pictures from the Hubble gallery onto uh, her iPad so she could keep referring to them as she went. Um, now she's talking about how we're going to splatter the paint on everywhere. Um, so here she goes, starting with the red paint, and I believe she's going to start with this one over here. Nope. So here she goes. Now when you're painting in general, um, you, you want to carefully layer your paint, taking into consideration how you want the colors to blend. Um, don't try for your first thing you're going to paint, the thing that you care about most. Most people start with small squares of jersey material or something. Now here she is. She, she paused the video. She did a whole bunch of painting. Now she's coming back to talk about what she's done. Um, so at this point, you can see she's simply painting. And I'm going to say, Richard, why don't you go ahead and pause this? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sh walk up to the camera, show more of this off, and um, show you what the final product looked like. And then I'm going to do some painting on this jacket. Um, I have lost noisy astronomer. She is off taking a nap. Um, but I'm 
following the comments and so I'd love you guys to join me in the comments right now um, so let me pause that video or mute the video I guess um, okay I'm trying to figure out how to take a mic So the, the origins of doing this uh, came out of um, – if you go on Etsy, there's a whole bunch of different apparel you can buy that is space-themed. And I was contemplating buying some of it. Courtney's like, no, we can just make this. And so this, this is what she created. I can't hold the mic and come up to the camera, so I'm just going to come up to the camera. So here we have a star cluster she put together. Whoops, I killed the camera. So here we have a star cluster that she, uh, sorry, this is the center of a galaxy that she painted. Uh, it's painted as how it looks when you combine the optical and the x-ray light. There is a cute, very a Spitzer-esque spiral galaxy, except instead of being in the Spitzer orange, it's in sparkly green. Um, this is a very specific nebula that I forgot the name of. Um, so she was looking at astronomical images as she painted each of these. So here we have um, another nebulae down in the corner, a comet racing through. A beautiful little planetary nebula, a stylized crab nebula, little tiny uh, green, and the lighting in here is really not doing this any justice, a little tiny nebula, um, two colliding galaxies on the shoulder, and this is a little star cluster. So walking around the room. So I am coming back and I'm going to demonstrate how bad an artist I can be um, at this point. We <laughs> Somebody please comment. I can see that there's a whole bunch of you out there, but I feel like I'm kind of talking to myself right now. So please send me messages. Send me love, something. Send me words in the YouTube comment stream. So lots of people back in the 80s when I was growing up had decorated jean jackets. And I know that you can still uh, buy decorated jean jackets a lot of different places. Um, I've seen them uh, at Harley Davidson stores. I've seen them in the Disney store. I don't know if this is something that the young and the hip still do. Um, but one really neat way to show your astronomy love is to find an old jean jacket, go to Goodwill, uh, dig it out of your closet, that item of clothing left over from the 80s you refused to part with. And no one is commenting <laughs> in the feed. <laughs> this is quite sad. Um, so go buy one and then figure out what is it that you want to paint. So what I have here is a couple different shades of blue. Um, I have some sparkly silver paint, and I have white. I'm going to use the white as an accent when I'm done. And what I'm aiming to do is a somewhat mushed uh, spiral galaxy that is rich in star formation. Uh, spiral galaxies, they're filled with young hot stars. Young hot stars are blue stars. And blue paint on a blue jacket just seemed like a good thing to do. I can accent it with star clusters using the silver glitter. Um, so this is just a way that you can um, add vibrancy. 
and I have a horrible feeling that this is going to go kind of the way the cake pops went um, and it's just not going to be all that great but I'm going to give it a try. So there's a couple flung out spiral arms here. Um, and you can either paint directly like I'm doing now or you can use makeup sponges. And with the makeup sponges, you can get a lot more of a nebulosity effect. So I can use this to dampen out my lines and just make everything uh, much smoother looking. And when you look at astronomical images, rarely do you see straight lines. So sponges are a great way to work on painting these things. Now as I'm doing this, thinking this is actually kind of screaming out as I make it blue, I'm going to do exactly what Courtney did. I'm going to start out doing one thing and decide part way through I'm going to do something else. I'm going to actually make this a young star cluster instead of a young blue galaxy um, because then I can show you more different effects. That wasn't good English. I've been awake a long time. Grammar is no longer my friend. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to layer on blue. Blue in this case is the light that is coming through in the form of a reflection nebula. Um, and I hear someone trying to message me and the message isn't popping up on the screen. Let me see if I can find the message on the other screen. Um, I'm hoping someone in the green room is maybe trying to reach out to me. Um, there we go. That was not whoever was trying to contact me. Um, can whoever is trying to message, message uh, Pamela Gay instead of uh, Nicole? Because I can't figure out how to get to the windows on this computer that have um, the messages that you're sending in them. I'm also somewhat worried because I still haven't gotten any messages that maybe Hangout Tracker died. Hangout Toolbox died our stream is very much not updating. This is all very confusing. Aha! There's more messages over on this computer. That's what I needed to grab. Um, okay, so <laughs> good. Michael's letting me know I am getting comments. They just, for some reason, aren't coming up in our Hangout. I, I think the Hangout toolbox uh, completely died. Okay, I'm going to go back. I now feel much better. Thank you, Michael, for letting me know our, our Hangout toolbox just completely borked. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm layering on first my dark blue layer, which I'm going to use in the background. And if you've ever gone out and taken a long duration photo of the Pleiades, you may have seen that there's all sorts of blue um, glow around the seven sister stars. You can only see six. No one quite understands the whole seven idea, but um, they call them the seven sisters. It's also Subaru in Japanese. And that blue is a uh, reflection nebula. This is where the bright starlight is trying to pass through the gas in a direction away from us. But the blue light got scattered, and that scattered light comes back toward us and uh, creates this beautiful blue nebulosity. When the light goes straight through, you see it as red instead. Um, so I'm going to layer on multiple layers of blue, uh, trying to make it look somewhat cloudy, uh, the way nebulosity looks. And just like clouds um, are um, puffy moisture that appears to be solid because there's vast amounts of it that build up uh, a little bit of water moisture, uh, water vapor in the air, um, it, you don't really notice it. Uh, you get a little bit of it, you, a little bit more of it, you start to see it white, slight opacity. You get a lot of it, you see a giant puffy cloud. Well, with nebulosity, if you only have a little of it, um, it just sort of reddens the light from the background stars. Uh, it reflects out the blue, makes the light appear more red. 
um, the more you end up layering in the nebulae gas, uh, the puffier the, the clouds appear, just like the clouds in the sky. It's very similar uh, physics, just on very different, very, very different scales. Um, so I'm now layering on a lighter layer of blue. I found that I can get better effects if I put on the lighter colors on top of the darker colors. It gives me a little bit better control. I am not the friendly guy who used to do painting tips on um, PBS. I am an astrophysicist who simply likes to paint. Um, so I'm layering on now lighter blue colors on top of this. Um, now the tool I don't have that would be useful to doing this is a toothbrush. Now when I was in the garage grabbing the paint I made the deliberate choice not to carry up the toothbrush because you can use a toothbrush to add lots and lots of stars. Now the problem is when you do that you have to splatter paint everywhere. And the carpet in my attic is new. I am sleep deprived enough to think I could paint with a toothbrush without scattering paint on the carpeting. The reality is no matter how awake I am, if you mix a paintbrush and paint and new carpeting within many meters of one another, you're going to end up with paint on the carpeting. I, I like my attic. We spent several years remodeling it. So I'm going to add the stars with the spatter technique later, but I'll explain it to you now. What you want to do is get the paint fairly watered down. Mix it with water. When you mix it with water, um, the, you can get smaller stars the more watered down it is. So you might consider um, first getting it watered down to make big stars with one splatter from a large distance. Then get it more watered down, get closer, and add lots and lots of little stars. And that actually starts to represent the actual distribution of stars in the sky. When people refer to our sun as being an average-sized star, what they're actually talking about is um, it is average only if you compare it not to the number of stars out there, but uh, how big is the biggest star, how small is the smallest star. Ignore the fact that the small stars greatly, greatly outnumber the big stars. Uh, if you can ignore that fact, the sun is average by mass. But if you start looking at the number counts, the small stars vastly outnumber the big stars. And so when you're adding stars into a cluster, you want to represent that. So water down your paint a lot, splatter small stars everywhere. Before you water it down, do one quick spray from a distance to get large stars all over the big thing. And then you're going to end up adding the biggest stars uh, using um, either a toothpick or chopsticks or a pencil. Um, I tend to use shish kebab sticks just because they're easy to manipulate. Um, <laughs> so Michael is typing to me, thank you for being out there, Michael. If there's anything in the comment tracker that I should be paying attention to, Michael, like I said, it stopped updating on my screen. I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> he's saying that he wishes he was a few miles closer. Um, I, I really, I, I wish you were too, but that, that's okay. We're making this go. If you see anything in the comments that I could, I should be seeing, Michael, please let me know. Um, I'm also going to make sure that I have, um, you can direct tweet me. I am at Starstrider, uh, S-T-A-R-S-T, S, sorry, S-T-A-R-S-T-R-Y-D-E-R, -S -S Starstrider. On Twitter, you can reach me directly and let me know you're still out there. I'm very sorry that I, I just can't, um, I don't know what happened to the window. It's sitting there and Comet Tracker has completely failed. So I now have layered on 
light blue, dark blue. I'm now going to start accenting this with a little bit of even lighter white, trying to blend into the yellowy color uh, in the background. Um, ooh, um, yeah, if, if you want to join me on air, that would be great. Um, so, so Michael over at Astronomy FM, thank you so much Astronomy FM for all of the help you've provided. He's offering to come in and help out um, so that I have someone else and feel less like I'm talking to myself. Um, okay, so um, Michael, I'm realizing I always misspell your last name because there's an E in it that I misplace. If, if you could please chat your name to me so I don't misspell your last um, I appreciate it. Oh, he's not typing. Okay, this is where I try and spell his last name. And I realize I've done it. No, oh, there it is. Perfect. Okay, let's see if that invitation works. Okay, I think I just sent you an invite to join me in the Hangout, Michael. Um, so I'm going to go back to, so the three paints that I've been adding on so far is I started by layering on dark blue. Uh, this is royal blue tulip slick paint. Um, on top of that, I added a layer of uh, metallics, blue metallic, um, which just has a nice iridescence to it. And now I'm adding on, um, to my hand, now I'm adding on 3D fabric paint in sparkle. Um, so this just has the effect of making everything glittery and it also has a nice, a little bit of white base to it. So I can add a bit of um, pearly translucency to it. Um, oh, that was not, okay, I invited your, so I'm still working to try and add Michael, I appear to have managed to invite his email address and not him, um, so I had autocomplete fail. Um, so right now in the house we have, uh, Nicole is asleep in one bedroom, um, we lost Joe. He went home uh, to let his dog out because dogs need that occasionally. Um, and I C H. Huh, Michael? For some reason, I'm not. Oh, you're already coming in. Excellent. I don't Hello. know how that happened. Awesome. I'm sorry. I was off editing for. Uh programming this afternoon. We've got Under British Skies coming up in a few hours, but I, I was noticing that things were kind of quiet in the Astro Attic your, uh, in your studio. <laughs> I got abandoned and then my comet tracker broke. So I'm sitting here kind of at a loss. Um, so I believe that all of the comment tracking stuff um, got shared out. Can, can you see yes. the stream? I can. I have to refresh every four or five hours. That might be uh, where the problem is for you. Okay. Um, so. so if you see anything in the comment tracker to relay in, absolutely, that would be amazing. Because um, unfortunately, as the control computer, I really can't refresh. Well, we have hello from Russia, and that is oh, from, um, Ah, Freak95. I don't know why I said that. I should have said Trastvestia. I Yagavru Palruski no Neochen Horosho. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, here, here's an easy one. I'll let you do this one. Um, Morgan Gordon would like to know could you please explain special relativ relativity while sleep deprived and, um, and while otherwise occupied? Easy peasy. <laughs> So, so I have to admit, I always get special and general relativity mixed up. This is my great flaw. Um, I have a very easy answer for that. Go for I'm it. a planetary astronomer. I duck the question. 
<laughs> okay, so so not remembering which one is special and which one is general. Um, one of the relativities um, explains that as you accelerate um, compared to another observer, both of you have to see the speed of light as the same. Um, it's one of those constants in our universe. The speed of light is the speed of light is the speed of light. Now in order for multiple observers to be able to see the speed of light as constant, if one of them is moving, but they still see the speed of light as being constant, the only way that is possible is uh, if time slows down for the person who's moving faster. So the basic concept is the faster you go, the more time slows down compared to another observer. Now this has the interesting effect that if you are on a train moving rapidly past a, a base where someone is standing still, what you will observe um, if a pot is dropped, this is my favorite bit of it, is as the pot falls, you see it going crashing down to the bottom of the train and shattering into a bazillion pieces. Now, someone else who's watching, because your clock has slowed down, will see the pot very slowly drifting towards the ground. Now, if the pot were actually very slowly drifting towards the ground, it would have absolutely no reason to shatter. So in order to make it so that both observers see the exact same thing, um, the pot ends up effectively gaining mass. It doesn't actually gain mass. It gains momentum, which, which has the overall general effect that um, we refer to it as its relativistic mass increases, and, and you end up seeing the pot shatter because now you have a much bigger, heavier object. It doesn't gain size. It gains direction, it gains length in one direction. Um, but so relativity, in order to keep time conserved, not time conserved, the speed of light constant, and in order to make sure that all observers uh, are justified in seeing the same thing, uh, as you go faster and faster, time slows down so that you see the speed of light as constant. Mass appears but doesn't actually increase. Um, and the length in the direction of motion decreases. That one's a lot more complicated to explain. Go listen to the astronomy cast episode <laughs> related to it. Okay, okay, okay. So if I understand you correctly, to use an analogy I can relate to, I'm not really losing hair. Relatively, I'm gaining face. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and one of the jokes we've been making uh, since this Hangout started is... Um, it's it's only 24 hours to Nicole and I, but we're just moving so fast that in the time that we experience 24 hours, all the rest of y'all uh, experience 32 hours. Well, I'm very impressed that you had a wonderfully cogent explanation and didn't paint the microphone while you were giving that explanation. That's... <laughs> I'm actually really having a blast doing this. I love painting, and it really made me sad while we were prepping for this show that I just didn't have the time to do any painting. Um, so Courtney got to do all of it, and now I'm sitting here quite happily painting away on her jacket. Um, so do we do we have any other questions we do. Uh, from the, the listenership? Chat's been pretty busy, uh, as comments as well. Uh, my friend Jeff uh, over in Milwaukee said either that you were speaking in Russian or you're really tired, which I answered to Jeff, yes. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and of course, you could just be making this up for as much Russian as I know. Uh, <laughs> Tom Richards is tuning in from the UK. He enjoyed the cake making last night, which I did as well. Um, <laughs> I thought the pancakes was also a, a very oh the pancakes cruel, was fabulous and I it was, was a hungry. very cruel episode yes that's when I had to take my break from the green room as I had to go march upstairs and and uh, have a bowl of bran or something that tied me over uh, let's see what else we got cooking over here in the chat room one of the other questions are uh, how are we doing on the schedule I'm looking forward to uh, as Amy still on for next hour as far as you know do I need to go duck out and um, is Tim 
take a take a look. I just know that right now I am painting this shirt. So yeah, we should have an Amy Titel. We have a Nicole. Um, Good morning, <laughs> sunshine. I think I'm gonna do an entire sleep cycle in 40 minutes. <laughs> That's awesome, um, Nicole. Yeah, you're your partner in crime here. Was yeah. describing the difference between special and general relativity while painting that, and she was doing it in Russian. <laughs> I did not do all of it in Russian. Yeah, not all ya, of it in Mogu gavrit. Uh, oh, I don't remember all of my relativity terms. I, I. So, so to explain <laughs> why I know Russian, um, I I spent uh, half of my junior year in high school working at the six meter telescope in Nizhny uh in the um, Caucasus Mountains, Northern Caucasus Mountains. Um, so I've actually got to go to Sochi on spring break where the Olympics is going to be. And it's a really neat city, but it looks like it's part of Disney World because all the buildings are pastel painted. Um, <laughs> so I've been a science geek for a long time, and I learned to speak Russian so that I could study astronomy at what was at that time the largest telescope in the world. Hmm. Now that answers a question from about 14 or 15 hours ago. That was in the chat. There was uh, some discussion as to why we're having uh, some of these uh, these glitches, uh, some of these freeze frames, and, and other issues that we've been having with the, the production so far. And my comment back, and I think we've just verified that, is because the NSA is having trouble keeping up at the speed of Pamela. <laughs> and for those who are not following U.S. political news, the our security apparatus are have recently been. Uh, uh, have recently been cornered into uh, admitting that they've been doing a, a fair amount of spying domestically that yeah. has bothered us to some degree. And and I have to admit, I did uh, <laughs> not qualify for a job when I was an undergraduate because I had um, I I was in contact with people in the Soviet Union. Uh, well, it was then Russia. It had just finished becoming Russia. Um, I I was in the Soviet Union to give you a time stamp. I arrived the day of the first desert storm, and I left two weeks before the Russian coup. Um, so it was an amazing time to get to be a foreign exchange student. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you're able to get back out. I, that, I, that's always the best part of an exchange trip, as long as you can get out of the country when you want to. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was an amazing experience a long, long time ago. Um, so I think I've added all the nebulosity I want at this point. I will probably add accents of yellow at some point. May I interrupt you for just a moment? Yeah. Because you're enjoying this so much, we're wandering away from why we're really here. That's true. We're, we're not you. really here to watch you paint, as wonderful <laughs> as this enjoying is. enjoying it. And I'm telling you, I, this project is very inspiring. But we are here because CosmoQuest needs our help. It needs a, a donation. Uh, the, because of the United States Congress, I'm sorry, I, I have to say that with correct enunciation, Congress, because in my house, Congress is a four-letter word. Because of cutbacks into education, public outreach, uh, science, citizen science programs, and a lot of other stuff, and just without getting too political, just a fair amount of boneheadedness. So I'll just leave it at that. It has been leaving people like Pamela and like Nicole and CosmoQuest and a lot of the other projects that you're, you find folks are involved in. And I'm, I'm saying this now as a volunteer helping you guys out, but uh, this is, uh, it, they've left us high and dry. And uh, we're asking for you, our dear listeners, to pledge your support. So if you're listening on astronomy.fm right now, then please go to the website, cosmoquest.org slash donate. If you're listening via YouTube, the link is there. If you're listening on Google+, Plus, where you can see the video of Pam, uh, Pamela doing this really fantastic, man, I'm liking this, this really fantastic artwork. But still, bottom line, uh, we're here to entertain you and to educate you and to uh, enlighten you. But still, bottom line is none of this stuff is free. The bandwidth uh, to broadcast this, uh, uh, this programming and all the programming that is created by CosmoQuest is not free. Even with volunteer labor and with a lot of uh, love and magic. And yes, that is gorgeous. So people, step up. We need you to pledge your support. If everyone gave a little bit, if everyone who's listening gave a little bit, 
A special plea to my astronomy.fm listeners. Uh, it has been a year and almost a year and a half since we had our last pledge drive because uh, we've been very frugal and you guys have been very generous. We told you we would not have to go back and do another fun drive until we ran out of money. And we haven't yet. Thank you. We appreciate that. But you can pay back that forward a little bit. And that is instead of donating to astronomy.fm, if you could donate to CosmoQuest in lieu because uh, CosmoQuest is responsible for AstronomyCast. 365 Days of Astronomy, uh, Learning Space, uh, Nicole's program, uh, along with Georgia, and Georgia's a big fan of the station, big friend of the station. Um, there is yeah. the Weekly Space Hangout, and I can go on and on. And those are direct benefits that we receive at astronomy.fm thanks to CosmoQuest. So please, 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 now, cosmoquest.org slash donate. Do it. So thank you, thank you. Um, Astronomy FM has been a friend to us for a long time. Uh, you've helped get our message out. You've played a con Astronomy Cast. You've played 365. Uh, you've helped us through some tech difficulties at various points in the past. We've brainstormed ideas to move our entire profession forward. Um, We've really been enjoying Slacker as of late. I've been helping with uh, oh. trying to get that back underway. Well, and you should that, go back and teased. listen to the old episodes back we, when we did we scripted do. shows. Yeah. It was pure cheese. We had so much fun doing that. Uh, Google Monday Night Astronomy. It is the oh. best opening to any audio piece I have ever done. Now that's a new one for me. It's it, it's one of the episodes of Slacker Astronomy where we started the episode with a parody of Monday Night Football. <laughs> um, so uh, Amy should probably be joining the green room though at this point. Um, I'm going to live very dangerously, though, while you're in here and attempt to recycle this window to see if I can get the comment tracker back because cool. it's disturbing not to have it. Yes. Amy Shearer title is one of my favorite people. Okay, we are back. Let's see if we can get the Hangout Toolbox going again. Um, stream. Yes, we have a Hangout Toolbox again. Okay. Sweet. I don't know if we have all the sources. I'm going to rotate this. Okay, I'm going to let Nicole take over that computer, and I'm going to eat this cookie. Um, oh, my God. Which you've been staring at for the past two hours. We, we have omelets on the way. Your husband is busy making that. Uh, Yet another reason why I wish I was a few hundred kilometers closer. Omelets and Looks coffee. like the, the uh, chow is great. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see, doing that loses all the sources, uh, which kind of makes comment tracker not work. That's okay. Oh, gosh. So that you're back, Nicole, is, um, is Tim in the... Uh, green room, or shall I yeah. go ahead and see if I can find Amy real quick? Tim is working to get Amy in the green room right now. Uh, okay. Tim has been up with us the whole time. Thank you, dear. I don't uh, think he expected to get roped in to that extent. Um, and then trying <laughs> to get... <laughs> Boy, what a sucker he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Now i got to get the comment tracker back, and that's going to be difficult. I hope you don't mind. I'd love to stay on long enough to say hi to Amy. Of course. Amy is amazing people. Oh, she's wonderful. Uh, and no. she's like micro-human. It's her and uh, Radio Astro Girl. Yep, Tanya. Are, it's <laughs> just two tiny people. All right. I may have retrieved the... No, see, Whoa, I earthquake. lost all the comments. Earthquake. <laughs> A very quiet earthquake. <sighs> so we've lost the comment stream to the events. <laughs> uh, we just have the YouTube comment stream. Um, Which is a step ahead of where we were, where we had no comments working. No, I had them separately <laughs> in other windows, which I can't oh. find now. Yeah. I had, I had a system. <laughs> um, let's see now. We've lost them. Uh, okay, so apparently when you leave your boss alone with the computer, I break everything. Just the comments. Is that the rain again? Yeah, it's Oh, my goodness. Again. 
Uh, which is why we had no astrophotography. Very sad. Oh, wow. It's really coming down. Oh, my goodness. All right. So uh, let me try and retrieve that. <laughs> the name on the copy <sighs> keeps changing. What does it say now? Magic Elixir. Okay. What, what am I trying to get back? Okay, so, so the next person joining us is Amy Titel. Uh, she is one of these people that knows more details about the history of creation than anyone else. And she also knows a lot about collecting space and all the really cool vintage stuff that's out there, all of the vintage memorabilia. And it's it's... I don't know how to say this and have it come out right, but the closest I can come is she does hipster space, but not in a bad way. It's it's just a little bit funky, all about vintage, and all about, well, exploring our universe and how we've gone about doing it in the past. Um, she's going to be our next guest. Um, and it looks like we've gotten back. I seem to have retrieved the comment tracker. I didn't destroy things permanently. Um, so we have, okay. So if you are on the YouTube stream, uh, this is the last hour of this one before we start a new one. Uh, so you can keep commenting there. Yes, hello, Nancy. Good morning. Oh, I got. Wow, that's crooked. Yes, it's a crooked. <laughs> we got. I got. A, I went through an entire sleep cycle with dreams and everything in the span of 40 minutes. It is quite impressive. <laughs> um, and uh, so on the YouTube page and then on the woohoo, on the uh, uh, main event page, on the main event page um, uh, on Google Plus. So the one that says CosmoQuest Hangoutathon main event page. Uh, you guys pointed out to me to check out the tweets and I did and there have been some amazing uh, tweets and and uh, lovely um, oh gosh lovely uh, promotions and retweets so thank you guys for the support uh, Josh Whitten's been posting a lot of those thank you Josh uh, actually no I don't have the event page back yet do I uh, no I do it's just not picking up the last comment uh, so I don't know if you could hear the thunderous rain that's coming down on us again uh, on our little slightly crooked channel here no just the microphones What's that? Well, you you have to give us the weather reports because actually the microphones are not picking it up very well. Yeah, we can barely hear the speakers over the rain right now. <laughs> um, it's coming down that hard. <laughs> well, your coming down hard on the skylight. Uh, so that's going to make things a little difficult because the speakers have been low. I think, I think the house is floating now. We're kind the of house is floating away. And oh, wow. <laughs> I see back. what you're saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's straight <laughs> now. It's good. Okay. That's good. Okay. Leave it there. Yes, leave it there. Okay. That's Amy's good. There. Uh, still no Amy. Uh, you know, on the main page, something that I really like is we've got the uh, the video of the Hangout happening in, in the main box. But then, at least on my version of uh, Google+, Plus, there's the uh, event photos with the picture, uh, the wonderful portrait of uh, you, Pamela, and Phil. Looking over your right shoulder, right at the screen, it's like you're watching yourself. That's the uh, the Avengers picture. <laughs> yes, that was my suggestion for superheroes. Yeah. I, I think that uh, Mrs. Ms. Peel. That's their new superhero. So I've sent uh, uh, Amy Shear title. Uh, if you're watching, I've sent you an invite uh, to the main hangout. Uh, Tim has sent you an invite to the green room. If you see something, join it. I know you were just tweeting and messaging about it, so you know you're on. Uh, we want to hear all about space history with you. I think technically she was supposed to be on at 10.15, so it's a little early for her time. Right. And and I'm crowding Nicole in part because I like her, um, but also because the pouring rain, I was struggling to hear we the really computer. Can't hear <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't had... I mean, it's good that the speakers are low. We don't get echo, but uh, it's making it a little hard to hear. It, it sounds like the rain is, is calming down, and I don't think we've gotten an e-alert yet, so we're probably still safe. Um, Robert, Robert, I can never pronounce his name. Blaskovich. <laughs> Hi, Robert. Uh, now explain how the TARDIS works. You, you are. Uh, it's bigger on the inside. No, timey wimey. <laughs> Spacey wacy. <laughs> timey wimey wibbly wobbly. Right, right. Okay. I, I can't quote anything at this point. Timey wimey wibbly wobbly. I got my whole forty minutes. <laughs> Tim's like, you still got more sleep than I did. So. Yep. <laughs> Thank She's you, wound Tim. up and ready to roll. 